where they should be going every day. Oh, I wish you could hear me today. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect. I'm saying you should strive for this every day. This should be an ulterior uh, you know, perspective of, of this is what I need to do every day. So he went up on the mountain. Because every time God is going to declare it, he goes up. Every time you want something done, you need to go up the mountain. And you got to meet with the father. He says, and when he was seated, see, he already knew that he was the king. And when kings want to declare and decree, they sit down on their throne. Have you ever studied kings and queens? You need to go study them because this is a representation of what the Bible says. They only, they only follow the Bible what they do here and on earth. So when he was about to declare, this is the way you should live. This is the high life. This is the declaration of independence, if I can call it that way. This is how America should look like. This is how the body of Christ should look like. I'm going to sit down because I am so, uh, uh, what should we call it? I know what I'm talking about. I'm so convicted. I am the king. And I'm about to decree. It says to his disciples, his the followers were about to hear a word that was going to change your life forever. And I'm going to sit down. Sit down in authority. Sit down on what I know is supposed to be done. And I am going to tell you the life you're supposed to live who can say amen so I'm talking about a Christ that understood his position he 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 didn't stay um, uh, standing up because he knew that when a king sat down to decree they were about to say something important who can say amen see at that time he was shut down and they would stay standing doesn't that sound like a courthouse? You know, you know, you're there to hear something. Do you sit down when the judge is talking to you? No. The courthouse is what they do is they sit down to decree and the people listening would stay standing. Because what they're saying is more important than what you're saying. Am I talking to somebody today? So it's, it's, a, it's a position of authority. He, you have to understand that it said that the, the, the disciples came, but there was more people there. Jesus had still a lot of followers. But, and then he said that he opened his mouth and he began to teach them. When it spoke about he opened his mouth, he, he's talking about a voice. It was a strong way of teaching. He, he was about to say something with energy, with, with power, projecting his thoughts thoughts he was about to say something so important it was going to cultivate it that's why he opened his mouth uh, when you go into the root of that uh, word it, it means it's good it's established importance uh, it established something you need to listen i am full of energy i am full of conviction i'm about to teach you something that's going to elevate your lifestyle in a way that you will never be the same again i am talking about people that are tired of living an ordinary life but if you listen to the words of the master it's going to elevate you it's going to lift you up it's going to heal you it's going to liberate you and your life will never be the same again who can say amen so he began to speak with freedom do you understand that every word that comes out of the mouth of the of the of your almighty god of jehovah god has the power to transform you right now right there sitting down you don't have to stand up you don't have to roll around you just have to accept this word and say it's mine i will never be the same this word will change me this word will elevate me I will listen and I will follow. Come on, give a hand clap praise to the Lord. In the Greek, this word meant that he was about to utter something dignified. You're talking about it was about to blow their mind. It was, it was an oracle. 
In other words, it had prophetic value in it. Oh, who am I talking to? You know, people that will come to the church and say, you know what, if I just receive one word from, from the pastor. They don't care and look at the condition of the pastor. Just, just looking for one word out of the mouth. So, so he was saying, if you would just listen to my word, don't look at my condition. Don't look at who I am. It, it doesn't matter who I am. It doesn't matter what vessel God uses. When you're in trouble, you just need one word spoken from the mouth of a prophet. God would change your mind. We're so used to looking at the vessel that we forget that God uses a donkey. God will deal with people. If they're good or bad, it ain't your job to do it. Oh, my God, he got us crying up in here. But we value the word according to what the vessel is. So God in this season is saying, if you need an elevated perspective, if you need an elevated life, listen to the word of life. The vessel's secondary. God will deal with that. And listen to this. And taught them saying, uh, in other words, I am about to teach you something that will change your perspective forever. He started the declaration of the kingdom. Who can say amen? See, this presented a, a different agenda than what the nation of Israel was expected to hear from the Messiah. It was a form of living so different that, that it, it, it became hard for them to even listen, the religious people. And so he sat down and he began to teach them. I want to go into this because I only got 10 minutes. I want to go into the first one because I want you to understand that, that this Sermon of the Mount describes the character of the kingdom citizen. Since it declared the kingdom, it inaugurated. In other words, it opened up the kingdom. It, now he wants to tell you how your character should be because you're kingdom citizens. Who can say amen? amen. The first portion of this Sermon of Mount uh, is known as the Beatitudes, which means blessing. It can be understood as giving the believer his be attitudes. In other words, the attitudes he should be. You understand what he said? He said, this is the character, and I call it the be attitudes. In other words, this should be the attitudes that you should have. I'm going to give you the attitudes that you should be. You might not have it right now, but you should be this. You might not be standing right now, but you should have this. In other words, I want to elevate your life so you can have the right attitude, so you can live a high caliber Christian life. Who am I talking to this morning that says, I am tired of living my life the way that I've been living I need you to declare a word. Give me a different perspective of how my life should be. God said, listen to what I'm going to say because I'm going to give you the attitudes you should have in every situation. Who can say amen? amen. Jesus said both the nature and the aspirations of citizens in this Sermon on the Mount. He said, you should be this way. You should have this nature. You should aspire this way. You should expect this. I will let you have the character trait of a kingdom citizen. Look at this. All of these character traits are marks and goals of all Christians. In other words, you might not have it today. But it's something that you need to have eventually along the way. Who can say Amen. See, the problem with us Christians is that we, oh, Jesus loves me just how I am. What, for 10 years, the same thing? <laughs> Come on, people. I understand that Jesus loves you, but you're still in the first level. You're still saved, and I'm glad I'm saved. And 10 years going now, you're saved, but what happened to you? You're still living as a saved person, but have you entered the kingdom the Bible talks about 
there's some that see and there's some that enter. When you're saved, you see the kingdom, but have you entered into the kingdom? And that's another message, and I'm not going to go into it. But you, we, we say we're kingdom citizens, but we're just seeing the kingdom. We're seeing how other people are living. We see what they do. We see how God elevates them. We see how they preach. We see all this stuff. So we're saved. We're seeing the kingdom. But God's saying, it's not time to just see other people do it. I want you to enter. Whatever they have, you can have. Whatever they've done, you can do. It's time to enter the kingdom. Come on, who can give a hand clap praise to the Lord? We have to understand there's no escape from our responsibility. We have to desire these spiritual attributes. We have to despise, uh, 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 desire these things from God. We have to understand that our salvation is not everything. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. We need to understand and master these attributes. So whatever we didn't do yesterday, we're going to do it today. But somebody is... It's going to get transformed by this word. And in five minutes, I'm going to give you number one. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And I'm going to go really quickly. When it's talking about poor, it ain't talking about poor in money. We ain't talking about you broke, disgusted, busted. We're not talking about you, you know, having this disgusted, poor attitude. Who am I talking to? This is, this is the first one. You know why it's the first one? Because it's the foundation for the rest. If you don't have this one, you can't go to number two. Who am I talking to? Oh, man. Blessed. I said it in the scripture. It's happy. So he says, happy are the poor. What? Hey, envied. You're going to be sp spiritually prosperous with life, joy, favor, salvation. Regardless of the outward condition, regardless of what you're going through, regardless if you have money, regardless who likes you, regardless who betrayed you, regardless of everything in your life. It said, blessed, happy. I need you to understand that your joy comes from the Lord. It doesn't come from this world. It doesn't come from the money. It doesn't come from your job. It doesn't come from the government. It doesn't come from your brother. It doesn't come from your spouse. It doesn't come from your children. The happiness that God is saying today, it comes from having a relationship with him. If I have him, I have everything. Come on, give a hand clap praise. It's not talking about being entertained at the moment. It's not talking about being motivated in church, jumping up and leaving here with a miserable mindset. It's talking about receiving this word and said, bless it. I am going to bless the Lord in all times because I know who he is. <laughs> bless it here, which has the sense meaning, meaning happiness is applied to God. You having this relationship. First Timothy 1.11 says, according to the glorious gospel of the Blessed God. In other words, you have God. You have everything. God will transform your family, will transform your marriage, will transform your children. If you have him, you have money in the bank because you have favor. You have grace. You have power. You have authority. You need to understand happiness comes from deep inside. And the Bible calls it makarios. That means a joy which has a secret within itself. You don't know why you're happy. You're just happy. There's something inside you that makes you lift up your hands when you don't want to. There's something inside you that pulls you to church when you want to stay sleeping. There's something inside you that makes you want to jump for this word because you know that tomorrow will be better than today. Who, who am I talking to today? Yeah. Listen to this. It's a joy which is serene and untouchable. No one can take it away. Not your brother, not your sister. No one that be 
betrays you, no one that gives you dirty looks can take it away. Because there's a joy. Oh, 